Okay. okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming to our Norton Public Schools Digital Learning Academy Zoom meeting. Uh, I am Marty Gagan. I am the principal of the Yale Elementary School, and I am also the proud principal of the Digital Distance Learning Academy that we have put here together. And let me just first say, before I even turn it over to Mrs. O'Neill, that we just want to thank you for your patience in all of this. Uh, I can tell you that I didn't even take on the position of principal until last week. So uh, things have really been up in the air in trying to get all of this set up. We have been trying to hire teachers. We have then been working with the teachers to put together the curriculum and the format. And, uh, and I, again, I appreciate so much how patient and understanding you've been with us because I know this could be something that could really make you nervous. And I can tell you that uh, tonight, I hope that you walk away from this saying, okay, we're all in the same place. We're all going to get through this together and that we're not behind. And that is something that I just want to express to you. Uh, that this is something that we have been trying to piece together as much as possible and have answers for you where a lot of times every time we hear a question and we try to give an answer it leads to six more questions that we don't have answers to so we were trying to make sure that we have as many answers for you as possible so as you know the other schools in the district have already given their open houses and Q&A Ours was pretty much safe to the end because we really needed all that time to try to build it as best as possible. And there will be times tonight where you might even hit us with a question that we don't have an answer yet and we promise that we will get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, it's the analogy that I've given to the parents last night for the Yale Open House is that we are building the airplane as we are flying it. Uh, we are trying to make sure that we make this successful, as successful as possible, and we think we're going to. And uh, so we're very happy tonight to present to you our academy. Mrs. O'Neill? Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer O'Neill, and I am the Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning here in Norton. Um, and I think Mr. Gagan started off as an started us off in a great spot because that was exactly where I wanted to start. Um, thanking you for your patience and your understanding as we got this off the ground. Um, Marty and I have been working um, a lot over the last 10 days or so um, on the details of getting our remote learning program up and running for you and for your students. Um, we have a fantastic group of educators that is working with us on this project and we have spent a lot of time working collaboratively with them to make sure that um, we are able to offer a program that uh, not only um, gives parents and families some flexibility and some choice, but also really promotes um, some of our core values of social emotional learning and um, student choice uh, from Norton Public Schools in this program as well. So throughout the night, um, you know, feel free to put your questions into the Q&A box. I hope that we will answer most of them. Um, and if we don't have an answer for you tonight, as Mr. Gagan said, um, we will absolutely um, get to work on figuring out what that answer is and get back to you immediately. So um, I'm going to go through the agenda for you tonight. Oops, excuse me. Skip to slide. Oh, yikes. Really skip to slide. Hold on. Sorry, Marty. Give me a second. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Um, so I lost the agenda somehow. So tonight, uh, we are going to go through a couple things for you, talking about what the uh, D Digital Learning Academy is. We're going to be looking at the supports that we have for students and for families. We're going to look at um, the programs that we're using. And then we're also going to take a look at typical schedules um, at all levels. So I'll start with um, going through some of what the Digital Learning Academy is. Um, when we were asked by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to develop learning plans for this year, there were the ones that we've always heard people talk about, the in-person model, the hybrid learning model, which is what Norton is going with, and then remote learning, 
hi, bud. Um, and my family just came home. I apologize. This is Braden. All right, bud. <laughs> <laughs> um, the remote learning model, which all of our students are learning in a remote manner, and then um, overarching all of those key areas, it was essential for us to have an option for students and for families that were unable to return to school because of a medical condition or a family situation that um, they needed to learn remotely for the year. So that's what the Digital Learning Academy is. It is our answer to those requirements and needs of our families to be have another option for the year. So you can kind of see that that's where we are um, in this Jesse overview. However, some of the things that we did last year, uh, there was a lot of conversations about remote learning in the spring and the rigor of remote learning uh, for all students. And we want um, to be sure that we are entering this new phase of um, learning uh, in a, at the Digital Learning Academy in a different way. Um, few of those things that we're going to be talking through throughout the night, our students are going to have access to a remote learning staff member throughout the week on a regular schedule that kind of models that in-person hybrid model. Um, and we, they will also have access to that, to that staff member should they have issues that come up during the day. And that is real, was really important to us that not only do we have online resources for students and for families, but that we have an actual certified educator that works for Norton Public Schools to support families throughout the process. Um, and, and, uh, as you were saying, Ms. O'Neill, that, uh, that what we did March through June was emergency distant learning. And what we're doing now with the remote learning or the hybrid learning that the, that the other students are, have chosen to be in is as close, and as Mrs. O'Neill just said, it will mirror in person as much as possible. Even if the students are remote, we are trying to mirror what in person is. And it's something that we have been stressing that the kids have to understand that uh, what we did March through June isn't what we're going to do here in this remote learning. This is going to be different. It's going to be more structured. It is going to be more like what they would picture if we were all able to be back in person. So with keeping that in mind that this is very different than the um, spring, we have a few criteria that we also needed to consider when we were creating our digital learning program. So the first of which is structured learning time. We need to make sure that our students are actively engaged in learning for as much as a regularly scheduled day as possible. Um, this is you know, guided instruction with staff, perhaps using the online modules, also independent learning as well. It was important for us as we were designing this program to develop opportunities for students to be working in an authentic way and not necessarily in front of a computer for six hours straight. That was very important to us, especially for our youngest children. So looking at independent projects, directed study, working with their teachers, perhaps working with peers, um, and then giving the opportunity to read and write and reflect at the same time. So that is one parameter that we needed to consider. The other parameter that we had to consider was taking attendance every day. Student attendance is required every single day in this Digital Learning Academy, just as it would be if your child was attending school in person or if they were attending in the hybrid model on both those in person and the learning from home days. We are um, Digital Learning Academy teachers will be taking attendance on a daily basis. Um, if your child is going to be out sick or needs to be dismissed during that day, it is imperative that you reach out and communicate that with the educator that you're connected with um, because we will be taking attendance. Um, and it's the responsibility of the parents and the, and the caregivers, the, the students, family to make sure that they are in attendance. Um, and then finally, uh, the other big factor that is different from the spring is that is the grading component. Um, regardless of the model, we had to make sure that we were grading students in, that in a way that aligned to our district 
our district and our educators criteria for students. So at the elementary level, we use a standards-based report card. We will continue to use those standards to assess our students. At the secondary level, we use more of a traditional grading format that all of us experience when we went to school, um, whether it is in numerical grading, you know, 80 to 89, or B, B plus, et cetera. Uh, students will continue to be graded in, in that way. Um, and so obviously if there are, you know, significant concerns or an extreme circumstance in which a family is having difficulty or is unable to meet certain requirements, we ask that you reach out and let us know this so that we can work with you through that. Um, and it's also important for us to understand that the students grade through this process um, will be reflected in partnership from the online platform and perhaps assignments that they do for their um, DLA teacher. And all of that grading will primarily go through that online platform and then connect with our own um, student information system, School Brains. Um, the, when we get to sixth grade, six through 12, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, it's very important for us to set clear criteria for students. Um, they have to earn a 60 or better and complete their coursework in order for the course to count, for them to receive credit for it, especially at the high school level when we're thinking about building a student transcript. It is very important that they are um, making sure that they are completing all of their work. Um, additionally, um, all of the grades will re be reported through Florida Virtual or Edgenuity. There may be cases where this is where students are transitioning back and forth and we will may have to make um, other arrangements, um, but you may not get an actual grade in school brains. It's more of a process behind the scenes for us to take the students grades and move them into their transcript. So it's a little bit of a co more complicated process than what we're typically used to, um, but we've been working really hard to make sure that all of our layers sync up. Um, so those are some key areas. The attendance, the structured learning time, and the grading are all very different from the spring and very very important um, as we launch the Digital Learning Academy moving forward. Mari, do you want to add anything there? No, I, I think those are the things that when, when we were in school committee meetings, and definitely Mrs. O'Neill was in those, but watching, listening to kind of the public and listening to what, what were some of the things that maybe we fell down upon uh, during the March through June emergency remote is that these are the things that we're correcting. These are the things that we want to make sure that we're there. And you'll also notice that we're mixed, we're doing a presentation right now that's pre-K through 12. So some of this is important in terms of grading for your child that's in grade six through 12. And then for some of you whose children are between pre-K and five, some of this is just over your head or not really what you want to know. And we're trying to we're get there. this out to everybody uh, because this is an academy, a school for all pre-K through 12. Um, so we're gonna talk about student supports. So um, one of the primary things that is, uh, we're really excited about is that every child has a certified educator that at least one, right, at least one certified educator that is there to support and facilitate their learning throughout the process. So at the elementary level, um, we have one teacher that is specific for preschool and then another teacher who's doing K-1, a two, three teacher, four, five. Once you get to six to 12, it's more broken up by content area. So your child may be working with a math teacher, a science teacher, an English teacher, and so on and so forth. Um, so they really do have that grade level and content expertise to help students kind of navigate um, not only through the curriculum, but the actual platform itself as well, um, which I think is really important. And then making sure that they're checking in with them, providing intervention and enrichment as, as needed. And that will be a little bit different for every child. Um, and these are just our elementary educators. Uh, last night, uh, Mr. Gagan and I shared with all of our families a document that kind of walked you through some different resources that are available and also included all of the emails um, for 
our staff um, for the DLA. So that way you can get in touch with them um, as needed. Um, so those are our elementary educators. Um, they are all fantastic. We're super lucky to have these fantastic educators from Norton Middle School here. Um, we spent a lot of time with them over the last few weeks, right? <laughs> we, we, we have, and I know that they've all reached out to you today. And yeah. if all of a sudden you did not get an email today from one of these educators, I know the middle school kind of sent something out all together. The high school has and, uh, and the elementary school teachers have sent something out. If you didn't get something, that's when you're just going to shoot me an email and, or Mrs. O'Neill an email, and we will try to make sure you get that in. Somehow, somewhere, we might be missing something. And uh, as Ms. O'Neill said, these are incredible educators, every single one of them. Uh, in the last few days and like last 10 days of piecing this together and then talking with them, they have built some really incredible programming for your kids. And I am very impressed with what we're going to do with your children. So uh, those are our staff members. As you can see, we're still looking to hire a math teacher for the high school. Um, and so I actually think that's pretty good if we're only missing that one person at this point, right? Um, but so we're working on that and hopefully that position will be filled in the next couple of days. Additionally, we know that um, some of our students that are engaged in the Digital Learning Academy this year have individual, individualized education plans or receive some sort of specialized services from our special education staff. We do have a number of special education staff that are on our roster as DLA educators. They are you know, very well versed and have already spent time working with your child's uh, original liaison to make sure that we are ready to go in, in terms of serve, uh, meeting their needs. They're going to be partnered up with a um, academic general education teacher as part of the academy as well, making sure that they can make accommodations and modifications um, as needed for students. Um, and they're also going to be focusing on academic goals. So um, speech and OT, we're going to be working with an outside partner to deliver those services in a remote model. Um, and then the adjustment counselors and physical therapists will be our, our Norton staff who will be servicing students in, in a remote manner. Um, there has, you know, we have been spending a lot of time talking about making sure we're meeting the needs of all students. I know that Mr. Searcy, um, who is our new director of per pupil personnel services, and Ms. Russo, who is the coordinator there, have spoken with many of you over the last few days to um, ensure that we are on the right path in terms of meeting the needs of all of our students. Um, some of our students that are in our specialized program, such as our GRIT program or our Step Up program will be working with other educators that are also still partnered with um, students that are attending in a hybrid model. Um, so it was kind of an all hands on deck approach to make sure that we were meeting the needs of all of our students. Um, in the same thread, um, our English language learners will continue to receive their services from our awesome ESL teachers uh, throughout the district, Mrs. Ward and Mrs. Z. We have a brand new teacher this year, Mrs. Creighton, who will be working to service those students as often at, as they would be getting services within the school, uh, making sure that they're um, integrating, you know, working really closely with the DLA educators to provide their modifications and accommodations. And those teachers will continue to connect with families because I know that there are some really special relationships that have been forged over the years um, with those educators. And I know that our families really enjoy continuing to work with them. So that is for our ELO learners. And then All right. With, with, with our remote learning academy, we, uh, we also have uh, some digital curriculum that we're using. So as Ms. O'Neill said, there are phenomenal teachers that will be there to support our students as they're learning and if they have questions. And, the, and we're going to use two main programs for learning. Uh, the first one is Florida Virtual okay. Learning School. And uh, this is something that the, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education for Massachusetts has chosen as the program that would work best with our elementary kids. 
And uh, it's a very good program. It's robust. It, it works very well. And uh, the thing is, is that during these first few days uh, of school, remote school, we're going to have our teachers kind of taking the kids through it and, and bringing them through it. So this isn't something that we're going to share with you and have you kind of go through it. And it's going to be the job that we have as educators to kind of make sure the students know how to go, go online to it and take them through some sample lessons and show them how it works and make sure that we're not just not just learning how to work an electronic program, it's more about the skills that they will learn through it. Um, so the Florida Virtual School is what was chosen. And uh, it, like I said, it's a robust program. It's very detailed, it's very good, it's engaging. Uh, and that's something that we want to see and be able to have with our elementary students. Um, so this will be for K through five. And uh, as it says on the third bullet there, teachers are available to check in with students in a manner similar to that of the everyday hybrid model, provide support with their online learning platform, as well as academic intervention and enrichment as appropriate. So they'll be using some, some resources and supplemental resources as well with the kids. And then elementary staff will also connect with students through SEL lessons, morning meetings, and other check-ins. And when we get to uh, the sample, sample schedules, you'll see how much that our teachers are going to be working with your kids. It's not just something we're going to say, okay, go out on your own and do assignments three through five. It's going to be morning meetings, explaining things, giving a short little mini lesson, and being able to help and support them as they're going. Our sixth grade through 12th grade is Edgenuity. And it is another program that was chosen by uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I, I could tell you that I was a principal that was on the kind of the, the panel that was deciding uh, what we should go as a state. And uh, Edgenuity, I could tell you, was the hands down the best one for middle school and high school. Many high schools, in, many middle schools and high schools across the Commonwealth have used it, including Norton Middle and Norton High School for credit recovery in the last few years. So this is a program that we do know. It too is very robust. It, it's very engaging. It, it has kids uh, learning in new and different ways. And, uh, and just like the elementary, we're still going to have the, the teachers connect with students through SEL lessons, morning me meetings, and other check-ins. So it's not, again, sending them out on their own. It's more about basically seeing that they, that they know what they're doing. And just like the kids in the hybrid model, it, it's going, we're gonna provide the support that they need with the online learning. And, uh, and as you see, there's, there's, uh, there's connections here that we have shared with you, but we will share with you again uh, so that you can see the student experience overview video, which the teachers are going to be sharing with the students tomorrow in the middle school, as well as the high school. There's the Edgenuity student manual, and there's the parent portal overview. And so you will then have your parent portal ability to kind of check in on your kids and make sure. And again, we want to make sure that the kids are doing well, the kids are being supported, and that they're doing all that they can. So there will be check-ins uh, with me, and there will be check-ins with the teachers, and then we'll, we'll, if someone is maybe taking a little dip or a slide, then we will be getting in touch with you getting in touch with the students to make sure we can see what they can do and how they're doing with it. Um, Marty, I just want to chat a little bit about the Edgenuity Parent Portal. Um, so for families that have already opened that document and kind of taken a little look through, they're they they recommend that you reach out to your child's teacher to get set up in the parent portal. Um, and what I'm going to say is that um, I'm more than happy to do that. I helped a few families today get them set up in the parent portal. Please feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, it's Jay O'Neill with two L's at Norton, et cetera. Um, and I will get everyone up into the parent portal by the end of next week. It's a good, 
quick and easy thing. And I'm more than happy to get people up and running in that manner. I know the teachers uh, are still learning the uh, teacher and student side of Edgenuity. So I wouldn't um, want to give them this other thing that they have to figure out at this point. So please feel free to reach out to me directly with that. All right, schedules. I think this is maybe what everyone's been waiting for, right? Perhaps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they are. I okay, think they fantastic. Are. So as Mr. Gagan mentioned earlier today, you should have received an email from one or more of your children's DLA teachers uh, reaching out to your child and to you to kind of um, get you ready to launch for this week. And as Mr. Gagan mentioned, um, our focus for these first few days is really going to be around creating a sense of community, getting to know the students, helping the students to get to know their teacher and their classmates, because even though they're not in the building, we still want them to have that same sense of classroom community that we all know is so important. Um, and then we will be walking them through our online tools as part of that getting ready and community building piece. So, um, the schedule for these first few days might look a little bit different. This is a sample of one of our elementary schedules. This was what our grade five students had sent home earlier today by Mrs. Rosa. Um, so the expectation for all of our elementary students is that they are, um, you know, up and they're, you know, ready to be learning between 8 and 8 30. It looks like the fifth grade starting at you know 8 30 preparing their workspace logging into google classroom reviewing the agenda making sure that they have all of the materials that they need for the day then they'll be joining their class in some whole class google meets they may do some small group instruction one of the key things for us at the elementary level was really making sure that we were giving students the opportunity for movement breaks, getting away from the screen for, for a little while, um, doing some training uh, with our students around our instructional tools. For example, looks like fifth grade is going to do some Google Junior training tomorrow on how to use our Google tools and um, getting together to learn a little bit what the expectations are of remote learning. Um, so this is just an example of what that fifth grade schedule looks like. Uh, there were individual schedules. Our preschool students received their own individual schedules. Um, K and one received specific schedules to their grade level. Same for two and three and for four and five. Every grade level has a schedule that is specific to them and includes time with their educator. So if you have not received that email, please make sure to reach out to us and we will see if there is an issue um, with our contact information or our roster. So, And, and as Ms. O'Neill said, these first few days are really to get kids back in the routine. It's been almost seven months since students have been at school. And as we're saying, we're trying to make it mirror what a normal in-school day would look like. And we don't want them just standing, staring in front of a screen for seven hours, but we also want them getting back into the routine of what a school day is, is like. So we want them up, we want them ready, we want them to uh, be on getting into it and then starting our day and then some mini lessons, as I said, some face-to-face -face meetings with teachers, some working on edgenuity if you were six to 12, or working on, on the Florida virtual and then question and answer time. And in between there, some movement breaks and things. And then we will have some, for the elementary level, some remote kind of enrichment ideas that they can do. And then for high school, their classes are switching. So they'll go from one class to the next class and have different experiences with different teachers. Okay, so that was elementary. This is the middle school schedule. So as you just mentioned, the going from class to class. Um, one of the things that we heard from families in the spring was that um, kids needed more of a structured day. Um, and I think regardless of the model we have chosen for our children, I think 
structure is not necessarily a bad thing. I know I have a sixth grader and a second grader who are returning to school tomorrow and, are, and um, our district is remote for those first few weeks. Um, and I'm beyond excited for my kids to have somewhat of a schedule tomorrow because it's definitely been an interesting few months. Um, so as you can see at Norton Middle School, again, they're getting up, they're making sure they're ready for the day that they should be having breakfast and dressed appropriately for school. Um, not necessarily laying in bed, um, you know, making sure they're uh, participating in the attendance protocol that their teachers are going to be discussing with them, checking their email, checking their Google classrooms. And then we try to break up the day into almost class periods where students can be working on their coursework in Edgenuity and also at the same time connecting with teachers as, you know, as those um, Google Meets are arranged. So students will have contact with their academic teacher multiple times during the week. Uh, we also try to give them opportunities for those movement breaks and lunch and everything else. Um, so that's the middle school schedule there. And finally, um, the high school schedule, which actually looks very similar. Um, down the bottom, they have that block for electives, which is a little bit different from the middle school schedule. They focused on SEL and wellness at the end of the day. But again, movement breaks, lunch, um, for those of us who've been working from home or worked from home this spring, being stuck in front of a computer all day long is a difficult, even for us as adults. So um, again, students up, ready for their school day by 8 a.m., which is a little bit later for our high school students than what they're used to. So. All righty. Um, and the only other thing that we want to make sure that we mention to families tonight is um, if you decide that the Digital Learning Academy or this fully remote model is not a fit for your family, or if you um, decide that um, hybrid is you know, an option at this point. Um, so it is really important for families to know that um, grading carries over from the platform. Um, so for example, if uh, a student has not been doing their work in Edgenuity, you can't just kind of say, okay, well, that was two months of, um, you know, free time and now I'm going to be coming back in. It is important that we are, uh, sorry, docs, um, you know, holding our students to some level of accountability with that. Um, for most of our courses at the middle school, it's not a problem. Elementary is not a problem. There are some specific courses at Norton High School that don't have a match in Edgenuity. Um, I'm, if you are going to take, um, you know, I'm trying to think of something crazy. Like we have a great zoology course. Um, so maybe you weren't able to take that in Edgenuity. So instead you chose something else. If there isn't a match, it, it could be that we find you a place at Norton High School and you can finish up that semester course through Edgenuity. Um, if there isn't a match for that. So we will have to look at every student um, on an individual basis. And the other thing that's really important for families to realize is that there is a transition period between when you reach out and request for your child to come back to school in a hybrid model. Um, number one, we meet all of our students have already been placed. So regardless of um, that your child is learning remotely, they were placed into a cohort. They, there was a schedule created for them regardless of their grade level. They have a kindergarten teacher should um, you decide to send them back. Um, so the placement is not necessarily the issue. It's, it's you know, making sure that um, we're introducing students into the cohort in a safe manner, but also making sure that we are, um, you know, have the appropriate preparation for that hybrid curriculum. Um, as much as we have tried to get our online platforms and the experiences that students are going to be having in this remote model um, aligned with what is happening in the classrooms, it, it won't be a perfect match. Um, it's, it's very difficult to recreate school uh, outside in, in this digital format. So um, we have very much tried, um, but it would be no more than a, a, you know, a two week transition for families. And in most cases, it would likely be a much shorter period of time, but we do want to issue that disclaimer um, to families as well. 
And, and as you said, Mrs. O'Neill, that we are saving them a spot, that there yeah. is a, as you said, there's a kindergarten class. If they were at Norton Middle School, they've been placed on a team, either white or purple, at the, uh, at the JCS, LGN, and the L, we do have a teacher that has been there selected as their homeroom teacher. And so we are saving them a spot if that happens. And for the elementary students and middle school students, if all of a sudden the district goes fully remote, uh, they're going to be pulled back in, as, uh, as Mrs. O'Neill said, within a transition period to get them transitioned over back into those classes. So, uh, so we, we, we are understanding and we do know that this has been a difficult decision for everybody and it is one that might be guided by someone that's in your home and uh, that's what's making it so. And, and so we, we truly empathize with you and understand and we're trying to make this and I think we have made this uh, a rich, rich program with sensational teachers that I think you're going to be very happy with and I think the kids are going to be very successful with. Agreed. Um, and also the other thing that I've actually heard from many families about was regarding transportation. Um, if their child will be able to ride the bus um, should they decide to transition back in a rem into the hybrid model. Um, and at this time we really don't see a problem with that because of the reduced capacity on the buses. There should not be an issue in most cases, um, but we will work with families for, um, for that as well. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that we can take a look at these um, questions here. And okay, so um, I'm just going to start at the top if that's okay with you, Marty. Yeah, I go through. Um, so the edgenuity info should have been sent out to you last evening in the document that came from Mr. Gagan and I. Um, all of our students have an edgenuity account. Um, the link I, we can share the link out with you again. Um, it's the student's first, it's the student's email address. So mine would be joneal at Norton. And then the students have a um, LACID number that they use for their lunch. Um, if they're buying lunch, it's, it's the code they have to put in. Um, so that is the, um, the password for them. If you have, are having difficulty finding that, or if your student doesn't know um, what that was, um, we would be more than happy to help you with that. All right. The second question is, in case you don't mention it, what would the Monday model look like? Do they have a school all day? They do. We, we are, again, modeling it the similar to the hybrid model. In the hybrid model, it, it is a full day for students. It's going to be a full day for our students in the remote learning academy as well. So students will have that schedule similar to what we showed you tonight, that uh, the middle school and high school will have classes and sections, and the elementary school will have a day that kind of builds upon itself with time for meetings with teachers, working on Florida virtual, and, uh, and, and just kind of change. And, and so the, for the students, it will be a, a full day um, set of courses and work. Um, it, the teachers may not be available in the afternoons. That is um, the time for their uh, planning and professional development as well. Um, there are a couple questions that um, are specific to getting students logged in. Um, I would be more than happy to walk you through that process and get you the information that you need. Um, Tracy, if you'd like to email me directly, um, we, I can certainly do that with you. Be more than happy. Um, so, well, I, I will say though, Ms. O'Neill, just to kind of back that up, that, uh, that that is part of these first few days of school is that the uh, teachers are going to be walking the kids through. Like if they're elementary level, and, and I don't know off the top of my head whether they're elementary level or not, but the uh, teachers are gonna be walking them through what it looks like to get onto Florida Virtual and how to get on. And that is something that actually we haven't given the kids access yet on how to do that because we want to teach you through it. We want to make sure that this isn't just something about computer skills. It's more about the skills that we want you to learn. And then for the middle school and high school, I know they're going to spend some time tomorrow going over edgenuity and how, how that is in their, in their class meetings at both the 
middle school level, the, the three class meetings that they're going to have for the three grades, and at the high school level, the four class meetings that they're going to have for each group class. Great, thank you. Um, middle school, what should they be doing tomorrow during the hours when there is not a grade level meeting schedule? So that is the time that they can log in, they can check out their Google Classroom. Um, there are going to be assignments given to students as well, learning to navigate, all of that information um, should, is coming from the middle school um, teachers as well. And the other thing I think it's important for families to know is that we're going to be working up to a more structured day as well. Students may have a little bit more um, free, and I, I want to use the word free time um, loosely, um, but they may have a little bit more time to explore and kind of get used to this over the next few days as we settle into um, a more robust academic schedule as well. Um, okay. Okay, so question about pre-K and grade seven don't have anything in their Google Classrooms or school brains. Um, preschool students do not have a Google Classroom um, and we do not release school brains um, to students at the elementary schools um, because we don't use it for grading. Um, so you should have received a schedule from um, Miss Becky, who is our preschool teacher and absolutely wonderful. All of the students have individual um, schedules for preschool um, and sh they will be a taking attendance during their meets tomorrow. Um, grade seven, uh, I believe, I'm trying to think of what time that message was sent out. It was probably around 4.30 or five o'clock yeah. that the middle school message went out tonight and that we did send it to, and by we, I mean our middle school staff, sent it to both the parent and the student. So I would advise you to have your child check their Norton email to see if it came through and then they will have all of the invites to join the Google Classrooms as well. Um, and the teachers are going to be going through the attendance protocol with them each morning. Students will be asked to check in on a morning basis. Um, not only are we doing, using it for attendance, we're also using it as a little bit of an SEL check-in. How are you feeling today? Are there things that you'd like to share with us? Um, and work with, so all of those things are um, going to be walked through again tomorrow with, with the teachers as well. Um, is there a way to arrange drop off with a Chromebook because I'm unable to pick it up? Um, Rachel, we will take a look at that to see if there is a way for us to get that out to you. Um, I know that our tech department has been out straight these last few days um, handing out devices, but uh, if you'd like to send me an email directly, we can see if there is something that we can do for you. Um, Okay, uh, there's a question about sixth grader at Norton Middle School. Um, no teacher assignment or Google Classroom invites. Again, I would recommend taking a look at their, your child's email that went out. I would, I, I, of course, I probably should look and see what time it went out, right? Mr. Yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, later tonight, Mrs. Elzer, um, and uh, it should be there. And if all of a sudden, uh, you don't get it. Just shoot me an email, and I will I will send that to you. Um, well, I got it at five twenty two. Okay, five twenty two. So it was a little <laughs> bit later than we thought it was. Um, but uh, yeah, the middle school all went out there. There's meetings set up. Uh, I think the eighth grade is the first meeting, the seventh grade, and then the sixth grade. So so those are the way the meetings will be going on. Um, will grading for remote students be done differently? Um, primarily grading will be done through the online module uh, and that um, the teachers will be going over all of the requirements for grading, but it has to be aligned to our district practices. So um, it will be the same in the same manner. Um, okay, uh, students should check in um, in the morning. Uh, they can actually get the link uh, for attendance on their schedule from their teacher. Um, but if they're having difficulty, I would recommend that they wait until they get to that meet and not stress about it at all. If they can't, yeah, you know, and, and that 
that that was something that a few parents had emailed me directly about in terms of uh, what if all of a sudden they don't see it in the morning. Uh, these first few days, we, we are obviously taking some liberty in terms of what time the kids should be checking their attendance to get used to this. Um, but then after the first few days, then it will be a straight, this is the time in the morning where you need to log in, this is the time you need to check your Google Classroom, check your email, and click attendance. And as Mrs. O'Neill said, the attendance sheet will be a, a Google form. And so those times will be set up according to each school's schedule and, uh, and the teachers. Okay. Um, there is a question here about time on Google Meets with their homeroom teachers. Uh, they'll have time on their Google Meets with the educators that are for the distance learning academy not with their nps yeah and that that is that is something that i think might have got gotten some confusion out there is that uh we do as i said have students scheduled at the throughout the district but at the elementary level where the remote students are in there, we're holding a spot for them in their homerooms. So it could have been something that they're that they got a an email from some of the teachers that are teaching hybrid here at the L or at JCS LGN, and uh, it will be something that will be a holding spot. But their teach their teachers for your children will be the remote teachers. So uh, for Mrs. Rosa would be the one that would be the teacher for the L. Um. A few questions here regarding the social aspect of school, um, and I certainly understand that concern as a parent. That's why it was really important for us to spend, um, you know, these first few days as, you know, grade levels, getting to know the students, making sure the students were getting to know their classmates, and, excuse me, getting to know their teachers as well, um, because it's, you have to build that classroom community, even though um, they may not necessarily be in a physical classroom. Um, so they will do, at the elementary level, they will have um, morning meetings every day to give them the opportunity to connect and share. Um, at the secondary level, they'll, they will have ongoing um, required meets with their teachers to not only address content issues, but to check in and see how they're doing. Um, I know there was a lot of concern last spring in terms of, you know, some having the check-ins being um, not mandatory, being optional, and that is not the case this year. Students will need to be checking in with their teacher on a, on a regular basis. Um, there is some questions here about um, my child received a schedule that says hybrid. Ignore that. That's for when, if you decide to send them back, the schedule should, will be coming from their digital learning academy teacher. Then there were some technology yeah. issues. So who would be the, who do we want to be the point person for technology? Um, there is a technology option when you go onto the district website through Let's Talk and they're super responsive to um, handling issues in that manner. So I would absolutely recommend um, reaching out to the tech department through Let's Talk. Um, for children who receive speech and OT, when we get the schedules for therapy sessions, um, I was told earlier today by Mr. Searcy that um, you will have a communication by the end of next week. Um, so thank you for your patience on that. Um, there is a tech question here about a problem with an email address. Um, Sam, I would recommend putting that in through Let's Talk and let's see if we can get that settled for you as soon as possible or send me a quick email with your first and last name and we'll see what we can do. Um, let's, let's figure that piece out. Um, Gmail supported on K and first graders iPad. So our kindergarten and first graders don't have a Gmail. We don't have them set up with email but they do have Google accounts. Um, so they would need to log into their iPads with their Google account. And once they are logged in, um, they will have access to all of their programs on the iPad. Um, will students with IEP plans that allow for extra time um, still be allowed that extra time 
absolutely. Um, we are still mandated to meet those um, accommodations, uh, regardless of what type of um, learning we're doing. So teachers have access to student IEPs and we'll make note of those accommodations. Um, okay. Is there a time limit if we choose to go from full remote to back in school? Um, I'm not sure what that means. Like, for example, like how long can we be at, like, we can only like the end of a term, I think. Right, I, I think they're saying if they were choosing and then going back, I, I think you've talked about that there will be some transition and things will carry over. But if that is something where all of a sudden the world looks better and everything's looking better, then can they move back? You can talk with us about it and we can try to start that transition back. Yes. Um, can you switch on the captioning? Yeah, I don't, I, I think, I'm not sure what the problem was here. I apologize. Um, usually we're really good with our interpreters and I am very sorry about that tonight. Right. Um, if a student has to leave or miss a course, um, they can reach out to that individual teacher that they're going to miss for that day. That would be my recommendation with that. Um, and they said that they, they had a question and that there are multiple teachers. There's multiple teachers at the middle and high school level that teach subject-wise, yes. So there would be a science teacher, social studies teacher, math teacher, uh, ELA teacher, uh, Spanish teacher uh, that would be working with students. All righty, um, a letter here. If you go remote, why have I not received one out of middle school at LJ? Um, I, I don't know, but uh, um, it, it, believe me, there's a there's a placehold for for your child, Miss Hassel, that uh, that are there. I don't know why they didn't send a letter e each. I I thought we were sending letters, but uh, but if you just contact the school and ask where they would be placed if they go back to to hybrid, they can let you know at the school. Um, okay. Uh, if you're, they were scheduled for things like gym class, um, you're going to see a new schedule in Edgenuity. Um, that will be changed for you. Um, also, the new to Norton and didn't receive emails yet um, for remote, just shoot us an email. And, uh, and we'll make sure because the high school emails did go out this afternoon. They might've been the ones that went out about four o'clock, Mrs. O'Neill. Yep, great. Um, 504s, the same, will be the same type of accommodations that we do in the classroom. Um, teachers will be responsible for making sure that those happen, um, especially when we're thinking about, um, you know, extra time for assessments or, less on a page or those types of things, they will all make sure those happens. Um, the 8A, 8B in terms of uh, sections, they will be told which, which sections they're in in the next couple days. So it's not something you have to know right off the bat right now. Okay, um, I think we've... Uh... Yes, there is a concept of advanced math for yeah. seventh grade. Um, all those kids have been scheduled into that. Um, seventh graders all take Spanish. Uh, I think That's a great we, question. We have yeah, let us get back to you, Mr. Smith, on that one. Um, let us get back to you on the, on the Spanish one. Um, it, it might be something that uh, you can get the answer tomorrow during the uh, seventh grade meeting with, with all the teachers. Is the middle school schedule flexible? Can they make adjustments? They, they can work within the schedule it is that, uh, that certainly there might be times that, uh, that students might need to be working in something else but uh, the schedule is going to be kind of something set 
that would be there for the students to work within. Um, all right, there are um, lots of internet. Um, we certainly will support families in that regard, making sure that we're, you know, accommodating and um, you there. If there's a problem, please reach out and let us know. Um, students that may have been added to a regular classroom, um, they are not responsible for that work. No. Um, there is a schedule in my third graders email, but not my kindergartners. You should have received your kindergartner schedule um, directly to your email. Uh, let's see, what else do we see here? Um, we are working on elementary specials, for example, art, music. Um, we are working on that final schedule at the moment. So there are still a few things out there that are not quite finished yet, but we're hopeful to get it done, you know, this week. So students will be able to access that in the coming days. The, the fourth and fifth grade schedule, again, is not going to look full right now, but their day is going to be one that looks like 8.30 to to. 2.30 in the afternoon, and it is going to be one that we will kind of have a set time for ELA, a set time for math, a set time to work on science, and then a specialist in between there and some SEL. So, so it will be in there. It's just these first few days, again, as Mrs. O'Neill said, during these first few days, we are just stressing them getting back into the routine, getting back into knowing their teacher and their teacher knowing them. And I also think it's very important for us to note that not all student schedules are completed in Edgenuity. We're still adding students um, to that at the moment. Um, so if your child does not have a full schedule yet, uh, don't panic because it will be ready to go. Um, okay. Let me see what else we got here. Are remote families using the same curriculum as Norton? It is um, not exactly the same. It is very, very close. Um, we have spent a lot of time looking at the curriculum to make sure that it aligns as best that we can, um, made tweaks and adjustments as necessary. Um, and that's another component of making we transition back if you decided to transition back to the hybrid model, making sure that students have the, the background and the curriculum that they need um, to, in order to be successful as they move back. And many of the questions that are coming up uh, that I've looked at down below are questions that are probably gonna be answered in the meetings tomorrow. And that's the most important th thing for you to have is to know what time the teachers are meeting. And, and if you did not receive those emails, please shoot us out an email so that we make sure that we have the right contact information for you and, and we will get that for you. But uh, a lot of the things that might be answered in terms of login information and access to it, those are the things that I think that, uh, that the teachers are gonna go over in these next couple days, but especially starting tomorrow. So, uh, so don't think that you're doing something wrong. Uh, mainly just kind of know that this is something that we're trying to make sure everyone is on the state, same page, at least to start with on this first day. Um, there's also a few things here too, um, Marty, about families that um, haven't received an email or their child is listed as hybrid, even though they selected remote. Those are things that, you know, please reach out and let us know so we can fix those issues um, prior to um, the start of the day tomorrow. We are certainly um, want to make sure that you are in the correct spot. Um, so please, please let us know what we can do to help that. Um, all of the majority of the meetings tomorrow are through Google Meet. So students will be able to do that from um, their district supported device. Once they log into um, their Chromebook or their iPad with their username and password, they will be able to access um, those meets. Um, there's a few issues here with logins as well. Um, 
I think that if you are having issues with the login, um, please reach out and let you know and we can um, check on that to make sure that there isn't a, a misprint or something that is um, getting in the way. So let me take a look there. Um, Yes, um, there was a question about a spot on the NPS site dedicated to the Digital Learning Academy that is actually in the works. So we will put all of that information there for you. There was a question about a printer. You don't need a printer uh, for any of this. We will have everything online for you. And then there was a question about the entire district going virtual part of the decision was fully virtual to avoid the back and forth. It, it, you, you would stay virtual and so would, so would the district is what we were saying. That if the whole school was remote, then all the students are remote. And then if we all of a sudden came back to hybrid, you could stay in remote. Um, will Edgenuity offer AP classes? Yes, they do have a number of AP classes that are available to students that may have been um, signed up for them through their regular schedule. Um, they are designed so that students can um, complete them successfully in a remote model. Um, there is no reason for a family to have to download anything onto their child's device, whether it's an iPad or a Chromebook. Um, our district um, tech department is able to do all of that for you and should have sent out um, all of the information to your child's device. Um, there was a question about guidance counselors checking in. There's a guidance counselor for the high school. There's a guidance counselor for the middle school. And there will be definitely some check-ins if needed in, at the elementary level. And, uh, and that could be something that uh, we could we could totally do some scheduled check-ins on the, we're definitely doing check-ins through the teachers, through myself, uh, on the kids and seeing how they're doing. Uh, because you're right, there will be some isolation from peers than the ones that are in the hybrid model. So we will schedule some of that for you. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, if, um, let's see. AP tests, um, that's a great question if you have to register for them um, online um, or if you can do it through Edgenuity. That is a great question and I know that um, Mrs. Prue, who is the guidance counselor who is supporting the Digital Learning Academy, I will ask her that question and she can reach out to those students that are enrolled in AP classes. Um, the virtual high school will run as normal. Um, for students that may have been signed up for that. Um, if you have received an email from a teacher that is not involved in the Digital Learning Academy, uh, for an example, uh, we were chatting earlier today about a parent that got um, Google Classroom logins from a fourth grade team. Um, you do not need to join that fourth grade Google Classroom. You are not responsible for any of the assignments that may be in um, their Google Classroom. You are part of the Digital Learning Academy and that is what you should use as your um, primary um, learning platform. Don't worry about anything else. Um, did you say anything else, Marty, that we haven't addressed? Um, the, here. the interaction of one another of the remote learners, there yeah. is, there, there definitely will be Google Meets and, and things of that nature where the kids will be interacting with one another through the meet. Um, so that will give them some kind, as the question says, some kind of social interaction, absolutely. Um, and then uh, having a hard time with Google Classroom accounts, uh, again, just kind of, if, if the students don't remember their Google Classroom account information, you can just send us an email and, and we can we can check on that and, and get that for you. Great. Um, okay, so a couple other things. Will elementary students be involved in announcements or other activities? Honestly, it wasn't something that I had really thought about yet, but I think it's a great idea. And I'm sure that Mr. Gagan and I can make that happen with our counterparts across the district. Yep. Love that idea. Um, 
There were summer assignments that some students had. I would recommend turning them into um, the teacher that is connected to that academic content area in the Digital Learning Academy. So for example, if you had an English assignment at the high school, you would turn that into Mr. Taylor. That's what I would recommend doing for that. Um, let's see. Um, there's a lot of questions about resetting um, Google emails. We can help you with that. Um, there was a good question that you kept kind of bringing up in that uh, as adults, we experience Zoom fatigue. What is the plan to keep students motivated? Yeah. And again, that, that's, that's going to be part of our job as the teachers and educators in the Digital Learning Academy that, uh, that it, we're going to need to keep an eye on that and make sure that we keep the kids motivated and, and do different things with, with the remote learning so that we can keep them engaged and motivated to continue to do this. Um, so that is something that we have been working on and uh, the teachers have been in, in professional development for the last 10 days to work on that and, and kind of try to get through that. Um, but we will be keeping an eye on that and being able to check in with the kids and hopefully uh, support them when, when, we, when they need us. Um, ultimately, there's a lot of questions. If my child has not yet received this, who should I reach out to? Um, you can certainly reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help troubleshoot some of these issues this evening and tomorrow. Um, what I would recommend is making having your child check their email and make sure that there's nothing there first. Um, sometimes um, it could just get, you know, overlooked in the process. Um, there are there's a lot of information um, in those emails from the teachers regarding um, class codes and um, accessing the initial meets tomorrow. So I definitely check your email. Um, I have, I think I've received all of them. So I certainly can forward them on to you if that's the case. Um, the other thing that I would also note is that um, some of our teachers have chosen to meet with students first and go over some of these really important um, notes, like for example, how to join the, the Google Classroom or where they can look for this particular information. So if you haven't found something, don't panic. Um, we will make sure that we get you, your child the information that they need for tomorrow um, and we will take it from there. So um, let's see. What There's a question here about will middle school students and high school students be behind hybrid students in any way academically and I can tell you no that is that is what we have done here we tried to build a program that works to mirror hybrid that hopefully both work to mirror what in person would be like if we could do in person uh, so that's what we're looking at and then the uh, the specials we are looking into some recorded classes for specials so that uh, that uh, our elementary kids would be able to kind of have access to those. And we will, we will work on that for you once we get those up and running. All right. Um, the MCAS, there's the one. <laughs> As of right now, our students will be taking MCAS. So uh, that is what we will be working towards. Uh, but that is what the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is saying, that we will have an MCAS this year. Where we are. Yeah. All righty. Um, see. Lots of questions. There are a few questions here regarding some specific high school things. For example, I still have my textbooks from last spring. And where I return them to, um, I would you know recommend reaching out to um, the high school themselves. Um, there are a few people that don't have the lunch ID numbers. We will, if you shoot me an email, we can get those to you. Um, will the remote um, teachers, the DLA teachers, be available the whole school day to assist? Um, they will not necessarily be available the entire school day. They might be working with other small groups or um, another grade level at that time. Um, 
but they will be available um, at dedicated time for, for students and that um, they will be able to, you know, if you reach out to them or send them a quick message, they should be able to get back to you in, in a reasonable amount of time. So, um, all right, we answered the printer question. Thank you all for your patience. These are great questions. My goodness, so many of them. Um, Marty, did I miss anything throughout? Um, I think there's some technology questions about using their own equipment and not, not, the, uh, not the school equipment yeah. um, and email wise and doing things like that. Okay, um, we're going to get further information about um, textbooks and AP classes. Uh, here's a good one, Marty. If students finish one subject early, can they move on to the next one? That is something that we are trying to work on, and I'm guessing that's more at the high school level than it is at the elementary school level. It, that, uh, that there will be things that the teachers are going to time it and place it and schedule it to be open at a certain time. But that's the things that the teachers are going to be working with your with your children individually and uh, being able to check in with them and see that they might need more. They might need something that they're getting getting through things. And that's where that's where it's going to be awesome to have all these teachers at each level being able to work with the kids. Perfect. Um, the other thing I'm just going to put out is my email address. It's J O'Neill O N E I L L at norton.k12.ma.us. Um, if there is a specific question regarding a login or something that you did not receive, please reach out and let me know and I'm more than happy to get you set up. Um, there is a question that if we transition with the hybrid model, um, could they stay set up in Edgenuity? You could make that choice. We would still have that available to families if if that's what you so, cho so choose. Um, typical class size, um, at the grade levels, at most grade levels, we have no more than about 20 to 25. Um, eighth grade is actually a really big number. That's why on the schedule you see 8A and 8B. Um, there's about 40 students in eighth grade that are not um, um, coming in the hybrid model, they're attending the um, fully remote. Uh, so that's why on the schedules you might see 8A and 8B, we decided to split them up into two cohorts. So that way they can have a little bit more teacher time there. Um, let me just answer that one. Okay. Um, Yeah, it was another question about, did we mention about the high school schedules? And again, the high school schedules are still being filled out. Uh, again, as Mrs. O'Neill mentioned, that uh, trying to match the classes as best as possible to your child's schedule is, is something that we're trying to do so that an ingenuity course covers for what they were wanted to take. So that that's just taking time. And there were many students that just jumped into remote in the last few days. So that has added to trying to get everyone scheduled for where they are. But that's why these first few days are really for us and for the students to get back into the routine of school, see that this isn't like March through June and that it's a different, it's going to mirror more the way school is and for us to get to know them and for them to get to know us. Um, there's a little bit of confusion with K and one about the teacher telling them to check the email, but they don't have email and um, we will confirm with her and send out to parent email the best way to connect with um, Ms. Appleby. Um, there was a few questions regarding that there. Um, Alrighty. Um, where will a VHS class fit into the school day? So for example, if you're taking VHS for your math course or your science course or whatever, um, it can fit in right there. If not, it can fit into the elective time at the end of the day as well. Um, you know, there, thank you. Definitely some thank yous here. 
Oh, Ms. Appleby has just sent a follow-up email to the K-1 parents. So K-1 parents, double check your email. Um, looks like Ms. Appleby has just sent something else out. So um, hopefully that will answer those questions that you have here. Thank you, Stacy. Um, questions about which eighth grade cohort our students will be in. Um, those middle school teachers will reach out and let you know. It might not be an exact cohort one, cohort two thing just because of the number of students that we have. Um, that would be wonderful. Um, okay. Um, I think the majority of these questions are all around um, invites or not getting um, the communications. Um, there is a question here regarding um, meals for families. Yes, we are absolutely um, still offering our meal program for families, whether you're in the hybrid model or remote. Um, that will continue for the remainder of the school year. Um, and families are welcome to continue to try, um, come and pick them up at, I believe, Norton High School. Um, fifth grade does not have school brains at this point. So, um, so thank you all so much. Um, pl again, please um, feel free to reach out to Mr. Gagan or myself um, with any questions that you have. I sincerely apologize for the uh, closed captioning issue tonight. I'm very sorry and quite honestly embarrassed that we didn't have it set up and ready to go. So we will take a look into that issue. Um, if there are families that would like for me to meet with them tomorrow with an interpreter, I would be more than happy to do so. Um, we can get that set up uh, tomorrow afternoon and we can go over the finer details of this. So, um, Mr. Gagan, do you have anything else you wanna? No, just that uh, again, we will try to answer as many questions as we can and uh, get through all the ones that are here. And also, uh, again, shoot us an email. Tomorrow is really more introductory type stuff. Um, check your email for that. Also your child middle school, well, fourth grade through, uh, through high school should have received it in their school email as well. So it would be a place to check. And, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to this. And this is a whole new world, but I think uh, this is going to be great for everybody. Thank you all, have a great night.